All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna give it like at least 30 seconds here until I see that um, all the settings and everything uh, uh, say we're live. I'm still traumatized after YouTube put me live like four minutes later last time. Um, it's 1.02 p.m. Or no, yeah, p.m. Oh, this really throws me off. So <clears throat> here's what we're going to do today. We have not done this uh, before. I have not done a second stream on the day. But I figured right now since I'm in the States uh, and in Eastern Standard Time Zone, I got pretty much much more time in the evening to do a little bit of trading with you guys, to do my you know secondary videos or do whatever I want in the afternoon as opposed to you know usually way in the morning when uh, it's nighttime in America. And I thought today, uh, why not talk about some of these um, cannabis stocks with you guys? It seems like there is a lot of uh, good ideas always being thrown around in the chat room and why not you know kind of make a focused video on it i was thinking originally we could squeeze it in at the end of the live stream but it's gonna it was gonna get a little hectic i'm already pretty exhausted after the live stream so i had a big lunch and and now we're back so um if you guys know if you guys don't know i'm pretty sure everyone does know and this is why the chat room always talks about it it's because you know lately in the in the ballot in the november elections uh, a lot of states were going Democratic, and the Democratic Party was very, very uh, open to legalizing and decriminalizing marijuana. So we've been seeing a lot of states popping up these new policies, and that's what we want to kind of be focused on in this video. Um, okay, so now cannabis is getting more and more accepted. It's already you know been the trend for many years now, um, but this kind of new policies coming through on the ballots uh, and just decriminalizing cannabis has pretty much made another bull run in the whole entire cannabis market. So that's why we're going to be looking at some tickers today. Maybe some tickers that are a little bit more sustainable. So guys, get get ready to throw out your favorite tickers here. Um, I got two from a buddy of mine that uh, shared them. I already did mention them on the live stream, so I'm sure some of you guys already know. But uh, here's here's an interesting map from DISA Map of Marijuana Legality by the uh, by state. And uh, really quickly here, let me actually close this and we could just, for reference, about DISA, Information Services Platform. Collect the data you need and easily access it. I like the kind of maps that they throw out here for all of us. So let's go back here. Um, if you guys are interested, I could leave any links in the video description below, but again, here you can already see the link up here. So uh, look at this. Florida, that's where we're currently in, legal status mixed. And I think a lot of these legal statuses uh, are pretty much all mixed. The only there's only one, two, three, four, five, six states here where it's fully illegal. And then you have um, a lot of states where the medical is already legal, and then uh, decriminalized is not yet the situation. Although in Florida, you'll have counties that decriminalized it, or or the the um, there's already been you know mayors telling the police department not to go. Um, and arrest people um, for cannabis, kind of. Um, uh, I guess, what would you call that cannabis? Uh, breaking the law, um, which is no longer enforced in a weird way. Um, then you got a lot of these states that uh, are fully legal. So it's basically everything's getting more and more black here. It's going from white to black. Uh, or I guess gray to black, and then green is that kind of that middle zone, but it, the legal status is still kind of mixed. So a lot of the tickers are kind of interesting, are ones that benefit from the overall ecosystem. So I guess I'll get started here maybe with two tickers, and then we can kind of see what you guys are calling out. I see FCEL is already being called out, CBDD, uh, NTAC. Well, that was one of the gappers we were trading today. CBD, CBD only. I almost read that as a ticker for a second. Jeff, <laughs> welcome back here. And uh, 
feel free to um, correct me or just write a bunch of... Um, I should have probably even thrown you on this stream, Jeff, now that I think about it. We could do that in the future. This is just going to be a, a little quickly where we're going to build a watch list. But, you know, feel free to throw a bunch of information out because, um, to me, this is not my forte trading area. I usually trade small caps, lead gappers. So this is going to be kind of a fun little thing um, that I'll probably end up coming down into a different video in the future. But um, let's dive it down. So Jeff, the 420 chef, guys, if you don't know, I did uh, mention him very briefly uh, during the live stream today. He's a good friend of mine uh, from up north when I lived in New York City, and he's a uh, renowned uh, um, cannabis chef right now living in California. And um, so, you guys, if you are into cooking and uh, baking with uh, cannabis, definitely a good guy to follow. Anyway, Jeff uh, said, you know, I was on the phone with him, and he was like, you know, telling me there's these two tickers that um, he believes uh, are are quite interesting to watch. And one is APHA. It's a um, cannabis ticker, of course, uh, from Canada. It's actually Canada's, um, I, I actually, before I just kind of talk out of my head here, um, I was going through an article on this one. So let's quickly read about this company very really quickly. This, this article just came out December 9th, 2020. So this is pretty much as late as it gets. It came out this morning, and I was kind of surprised to even see that. Um, Today, investors can buy cannabis number one pot producer stock for a very low price. There's no doubt that the shares are undervalued, trading at 5.4 times sales and 1.8 times book value. Actually, a PE of that is is quite uh, astonishing. Hold on, let's let's pull up this one, Finviz here. That does sound like a really good PA. And it, it did have a little run here, Canadian specialty. Um, 289 million flow, $2.4 billion company. So it's a fairly large size company. It's been getting upgraded, outperformer quite a bit. Doesn't show insider buying at the moment or selling. So that just might not be updated. PE of 28. Had a, had a pretty solid move so far. Wait, were they paying a dividend here? No dividend that I'm seeing. <laughs> I see more tickers being called out. We'll uh, we'll talk about if more and more. Let me just quickly wrap up uh, with APHA. Um, so I'll be doing a little bit more technicals on this one, and then we'll be sa uh, saving the due diligence or in-depth view on these tickers um, for another video. So um, for now, we're just going to be building a little bit of a portfolio of a watch list, more or less. So APHA uh, right now had that big breakout here of around 670 uh, roughly 680 here. So this is actually right when we broke six. That was a critical spot. You can see we had a nice little breakout there. Pull back to the nine EMA. Remember, a ticker over the nine EMA is an upwards trending stock. So that's a really, really good sign. We have yet to break this. Looks like we're going to see a little bit of consolidation here. Kind of reminds me of one of my favorite ETFs, Jets, where we are having um, a nice continuation right here. And uh, we're holding above the nine EMA. So let me not get off track. But similar situation here. I wouldn't be surprised on this kind of failing volume right here that maybe we had a little bit of a dip and maybe we had a little bit of a retrace into the $7 zone. Would absolutely not be surprised. So that could be a way to kind of trade this one, wait for a bit of a healthy pullback here, and then maybe wait for accumulation. The fact that APHA did have an article come out um, about this one today, and it's not necessarily rallying here. Eleanor T. Fitzsimmons can well, more well, than people. Well, we are having, I have no what idea what that was. Just like an iShares uh, ETF. Uh, okay. Finviz always throws ads on me. It's heavy duty stuff. Maybe I have to upgrade. That's what they want me to do. Uh, anyway, so I, I really like the upside on this one. I would see this move to at least $10 um, before you know having a larger pullback. But for now, one option would be waiting here for a little bit of a pullback on APHA and then seeing if we could rip this to $10. Now, that would be about 40% upside if you wait for a pullback. Otherwise, you know, it could be a 20% move, but you're also risking here about a 17% move uh, to the downside. So maybe not the best risk reward at the moment, but it is in a healthy upwards trending uh, kind of move overall here. So I do like what I'm seeing on the weekly where we're over the 180 uh, simple moving average. So that's kind of good little uptrend territory right there. Uh, and the one and the other ticker I do want to kind of point out here is GRWG growth generation. This ticker 
is kind of like from what I heard more of a Home Depot um, but it really focuses on hydroponics and whatnot. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit more into this company. C G R W C. See how right I am about this one, and then we'll start going through all the tickers you guys um, are throwing out here. Home Improvement Retail Growth Generation Corp. Let's actually one of the things I always like to do is just go to the website. If you don't know much about a ticker, it doesn't help just to go to the website and kind of dive into it a little bit yourself. Uh, here you can kind of see a picture. Hopefully you guys can see that, but whoop, where do we go? Oh, picture disappeared. There it is. Picture, uh, so it does look like a little bit of Home Depot style, um, kind of like home construction store where you get all these things. Um, they focus on hydroponics. I actually like the fact that they kind of diversify in more of a, like a garden atmosphere as well because um, there's a little bit of diversification. This kind of home improvement, all these kind of, um, you know, do-it-yourself, DIY projects. Um, gardens, uh, the huge trend of millennials moving to the suburbs, all these things can contribute to these stores really booming. And if you just look at their stock price, GRWG, this is a weekly chart. If we go to the daily chart, it really represents that. Um, this is kind of like a long-term sustainable business. Even the pullbacks aren't too ferocious. And this rally here, uh, since the beginning of the year, it's a 1,700% rally. That is absolutely insane. Uh, so really, really good to see something like that. Um, so GRWG is another pick um, that, again, Jeff, the 420 chef, uh, kind of put on my radar here and said this is definitely something to be checking out. So, again, uh, thanks, Jeff, for um, putting these two on my radar. Um, so we already talked about AFA, GRWG. Where would I be looking to trade GRWG? Well, you guys know me. I'm more of a conservative trader, and uh, I always look for some sort of healthy um, pullback or retest. I do like breakouts as well, and I, oftentimes, if there's a big breakout, I'll start accumulating on that first pullback. As long as there's good news, there's no bad new news coming in, and the pullback is more or less low volume and just a little bit of profit taking before a nice move to the upside. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to trade, and uh, I don't think... Uh, I don't think TD Ameritrade's showing trades right now because it's always a little bit congested during the day, but that's exactly what we did here on DKNG DraftKings when DraftKings finally had this big breakout um, past the former high at 40, and then we were buying, accumulating into this pullback into the 40s, and then we sold it into the 55 rip to the upside. So that's a classic way that I like to hold on to swing trades. When I'm looking at GRWG, I'm thinking, okay, really nice ticker overall, um, but a little bit maybe extended short term. So I'm a little bit worried on actually entering this one at the current moment. USA, home improvement, retail, $1.7 billion company, $37 million, uh, $37 million float, no dividend. Okay, so they did an offering here, $150 million offering. You gotta watch out for offerings. Although Tesla recently did an offering and they didn't dip at all. It's ridiculous how bullish that ticker is. A $30 offering. So it's clearly priced in already, but that means there's a little bit of dilution here. So if you're long GRWG, uh, your shares, you own technically a little bit less equity at this point um, after that offering. Offerings aren't always a bad thing, right? It just means the company is raising capital, um, but it is at the expense of diluting your shares. So it, it, it's a bit of a mixed thing, you know? To me, I, I have a hard time with it when uh, small caps are doing dilution offerings at like 9.45 or 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on a you know $5 million float and it crashes the whole stock 50%. That's when it gets dangerous. Um, so for me, uh, this could be a healthy pullback here. Um, I would have to do a little bit more due diligence in GRWG, um, but for now, um, I do like the upside on this one. I like the story behind it. I like that it's like, a diversified physical store. <clears throat> I think it has good macro trends, uh, and um, yeah, the micro news with the offering might be you know the only uh, short-term red flag. Unless you dig into you know what is the offering about, and okay, well, um, it totally makes sense. So this looks pretty healthy here. All right, let's go through some of the tickers you guys think. And actually, let me quickly just put in a possible entry on this one. Let me go to the four hours, see if I can get a better, better point. So $30 is where they did the offering. It looks like we already bounced off of $30 and had nice little 10% pops to the upside. We have the 180 uh, simple moving average coming in here, which is a nice upwards trend. I don't know, it's hard to say. I think if we crack $30 on this one, maybe this is something to jump into. 
So I'll keep an eye on this $30 zone, and I think accumulating under 30 uh, for a hold might be a good way to trade it, but at the moment, I'm a little bit undecided in this one. Had a nice run, though, and uh, somewhere possibly above 25 could be a really good entry here, maybe even lower into the 20s. All right, all right, let me go back up. FCEL, I see being called out here. And the amount of times we've traded FCEL as a... As a... Um, FCEL is giving me personally a hard time right now. Yeah, man, I really wish TD was showing trades right now. Fuel cell energy. I don't think this is a cannabis ticker. Hold on. Solar, I think this, yeah, solar. I was like, wait a second, isn't FCEL in my EV ticker? I don't see it, unless I walk right through it. But I don't think this one fits our cannabis, so I apologize for that. SNDL from Paul. Let's see what he's hiding here. Why, 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 SNDL, Sundial Growers, here we go. I'm not sure why typing that in wasn't working. Uh, maybe I was typing in something wrong. 270 million market cap. This is finally getting into a little bit of, uh, let me go filter these by market cap. So this is gonna be one of the smaller tickers here actually that we're looking at. 500 million float or 400 million float, huge float there. So it takes a little bit more to move a company like this. Recent upgrades. Engages in the production distribution and sales of cannabis products for the adult use market. And in the UK, there's a, a lot of these companies are Canadian. 2006, so it's definitely been around for quite some time. Don't forget to write in the chat room, guys, uh, what some of your favorite parts are about some of these tickers. Nice, Paul. Cleaned up 100% on SNDL on the election. You, That's some exciting stuff. All right, let's do a little bit of analysis on this one. I think since these guys are not so focused from what it seems like um, from a medical standpoint, let me just put in some numbers here. Um, that's why you have to kind of put in your age, it seems like. Discover, give the gift of sundial. Can I just order this to my house? That's kind of interesting. It's like a franchise with a nice online retail. What I like about a ticker that is pulling back here is check out the... <clears throat> Check out the drop in the volume here. This is really nice. So on the on the way to the downside, we have less and less sell volume. That's always a, a bullish sign, something I'm looking for. Uh, unfortunately, when I look into the long term of this chart, it looks like there's a lot, a ton of dilution on this ticker. 
So in terms of investing, SNDL would be something I'd be a little bit more cautious of. What I would probably prefer to do on a ticker like SNDL is maybe aggressively swing traded uh, on some um, larger pullbacks, but then maybe, I don't know, I would probably end up just day trading this one above a dollar. I don't think I would invest in this ticker, uh, unfortunately. It looks like a bit of more of a kind of, accumulate and you just hope for the best, but it just doesn't seem like something as an investor I would really get behind. Mainly because of that long-term dilution and the overall trend of this ticker, so. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's a good stock, just means it doesn't really fit my bill. So ACB, I know this one was called out a few times in the chat, A Aurora. We actually did a full entire video on this ticker. If you guys wanna check it out. Uh, if you just go to the videos. If you just go to the videos and search ACB, you can check out this video. We did a video on it uh, a month ago. Um, it had a huge, huge move to the upside, and ever since then, I think the chat room was a little bit more bullish on um, uh, cannabis in general. Uh, da -da -ba -ba. So again, like this one, we had this sell-off here after reaching some huge resistance around 12, and check out the volume here. It really faded lightly. It was really good to see a little bit less volume, and then we started consolidating here um, what it looked like uh, new highs because we didn't dip back all the way. Then we had another run here. Looks like we're having another healthy pullback here. So big question, is the 180 day now gonna be a new support? Usually when you're trending above the 180 day average and the 90 EMA, you're, in an up -trending, uh, you're on an upside of the move. So this is something that I would look to maybe invest into, maybe go long. Uh, I do like ACB um, ticker a little bit more, but this one also offers up quite a bit of dilution. So you do wanna be uh, weary about this one. I think the way I would go about ACB at this point in time I would have a hard time really buying into this $10 zone. It looks like volume's fading here. We're about to have a triple bottom and I would not be surprised if $10 cracks. So what I'd be looking for is a crack of 10 and then sell volume to fade and then maybe accumulate a position size right around 8. And then a position size above eight, that's when things can get a little bit more interesting. And then any catalyst can rip this one back to the upside, really depending how many um, you know back holders are left kind of holding this one, uh, what people are thinking. So this is kind of a really, really simple uh, thesis that I would look for this one. But just looking at ACB right now, it seems like there's a little bit too much risk for me. Um, you have that potential move over here, um, but then we have huge resistance between 12 and 13, 12.50 even. That's a 20% move, but you're risking about a 20, 24, uh, 20 to uh, 20 plus percent move to the downside. That's barely a one-to-one -one risk reward trade. So to me, ACB right now uh, accumulating in these areas is just a little bit too risky, and I don't think it's a trade for me. Uh, but again, if we did pull back down to the eights, I think any catalyst um, at those prices could start ripping this ticker. So for me, um, I would probably look for ACB around eight. Oh yeah, GLSI was an absolute ripper today. That was another leak gapper that, um, I don't know why that's not working, copying and pasting today. This was getting halted so much today. I was not trading GLSI, uh, a little bit too too risky with all the halts for me, so. But wow, yeah, absolutely ripping here. <clears throat> GRSO, let's pull it up. Hmm. 
Hmm, not popping up. Crow Solutions. Oh, that's OTC, that's why. The control tech environment of an aeropod mimics perfect natural conditions through sensors and controllers, creating the optimal growing environment for food and cannabis. A little bit of CGI here. They throw the investor information around on the homepage of the website. Very questionable OTC ticker. I'm not sure how I feel about this one at all. Come on, guys. I still think I like Jeff's picks the most so far. Uh, ACB is, is definitely probably the runner-up at the moment. I don't know. I typically don't trade OTCs. It's a total shot in the dark. If anything, this company might try to raise some capital. You might be able to easily make 100% on this, but then there might not be enough volume to actually get out and sell. It really, I think on, on GRSO, I mean, sounds good on the surface, but it looks pretty shady overall. So I think your best bet on GRSO is honestly if it gets picked up by a boiler room and just gets pumped and you know you sell before the dump. So I don't know, it doesn't look too hot. TCNF being called out. TCNNF. Man, oh man. How come during normal times I never have issues typing in tickers, but today I can't seem to type in any tickers or right now? Okay, there we go. Hmm. TCNNF, also an OTC. F. So typically a ticker is four letters. If there's a fifth letter, um, it typically represents something. In this case, it's an F, which represents foreign. So TCNNF looks to be a foreign entity. Let's quickly see if we can learn more about that. Looks like they have offices in Florida. See if we could pull anything out uh, about this company. True Leaf is a vertically integrated seed to sale company. First and largest fully licensed medical cannabis company in the state of Florida. Operates in California, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Hmm, interesting. Not sure why they have the F on their ticker then. Maybe as an OTC, could be indicating something else. OTCs are always a little bit more, ah, there we go. So it's a Canadian company, it looks like. I'm 28, by the way, if anyone's wondering. So <laughs> just kind of going through here, clicking. So they got these dispensaries in these four locations here. Nice little rally on TCNNF. I didn't think I would be so optimistic on a OTC. I got to say, so good call out. 
Oh, we just bought VLDR, guys. We just bought VLDR. I'm gonna have to add that to the Discord. I always like to add my swing trades to the Discord so you guys know about them. Uh, okay, so limit order that was just executed. Three point five billion dollar company, TCNNF, quite nice. So one that looks like it would justify a little bit more due diligence here. Nice little solid uptrend. Wouldn't be surprised if they came out with a catalyst that said something about uplisting. I don't see it out of the gate, but this is one that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this one. And ACB is another one I'll highlight. So I'm highlighting some of my uh, favorites. They are Canadian. Yeah, it looked like it. Looked like it. What's up, guys? See, see some more faces crawling in here. DGLY? Ugh. I don't know why. It's doing that to me. Uh, guys, we are only doing right now cannabis pot weed tickers. I don't think DG, DGLY was that. Um, I remember that was law enforcement cameras or something, surveillance. This was a hot um, BLM ticker. Um, yeah, back in June. This was going crazy during, during a lot of the initial riots. A triple bottom ZW can be a bullish sign. Sorry, I just read your comment. Uh, we were talking about... We were talking about ACBC, ACB, I believe. Um, yeah, a triple bottom can be bullish, but only after it holds the holds the bottom. So to me, I would not be buying initially into a triple bottom here. I would be waiting for a potential crack and if it holds the highs and then starts continuing to the upside then that's a very bullish sign um, but right now it's setting up for a break the volume's very light right now uh it looks like we're having lower highs i would not be surprised if we crack this area at all so i would not be buying acb right just yet uh so that's why i'm being a little bit more cautious on acb so it looks like it's it has the potential to be a failed triple bottom so you could buy into the triple bottom, but then you'd have to close fairly quickly. Uh, CBDD, so you want to be ready to cut your losses. Oh, okay, C, okay, it doesn't type, it doesn't work copying in it anymore. I, I don't know why it's not. Okay, another ticker. Let's see, you guys seem pretty excited about this one, which is making me kind of excited about it. Ah, oh, yeah, no problem, Gideon. CBDD. Is this another OTC? Denver. CBD Social Network. CBD of Denver. What is going on over here? Was created to offer the consumer a unique and new perspective on the unorganized and confusing CBD industry. <laughs> That's probably what this stream feels like. CBD of Denver Inc. is multifaceted company with subsidiaries in the United States and Europe. For a company that's supposed to give a unique and new perspective on an unorganized and confusing industry, this about makes me more confused. So not Super excited with that. <sighs> this chick's really excited. She's ready to go. She's says bye. Bye, bye, bye. It looks like they have a little bit of investor research. I'm not a big fan of their website, though. It's a little bit all over the place. 
Uh, let's go to brands. Let's see what they got here. So I'm extremely skeptical of like 99% of the companies we look at. Okay, maybe like 95%. Um, build for your spectrum. What is the CBD social network.com and how are they related? Does anyone, is anyone part of the CBD social network? That's the real question. Lance says CBDD has stores in seven countries. I guess this is one of their brands right here. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, Eric. Um, all right, well, let's, let's throw CBDD up on the charts because I'm getting pretty curious here what we're looking at on this ticker. Uh, I'm going to add it to our cannabis watch list, which is going pretty strong right now. Uh, this OTC. Yeah, I, I don't know what you want me to say about an OTC that, you know, is a sub sub penny stock like. Total shot in the dark. You know, if it, even if it is a scam or, you know, a shady company with dilution and investor fraud, doesn't mean that they don't get picked up and get pumped and you make, you know, 200%, 300%. But at the same time, maybe there's not enough volume where you can even trade it so you can't even get out. So it's like, I, I don't even like talking about tickers like this because to me, it's just, it's, just, you can get lucky and you can also get unlucky. And that's pretty much uh, half the play. So. So for me, I so far I like APHA as a little recap here, uh, one of Canadian's top um, cannabis companies. We have GRWG, which is like a Home Depot for hydroponics and plants and cannabis. ACB, this is a ticker we traded quite a bit, more taking the medical marijuana route. Did I go to the homepage of ACB? I don't even remember. Drug manufacturer, specialty and generic, uh, another Canadian company. So those are probably my three favorite. TCNNF, probably my favorite OTC if we had to pick a favorite. You know what, uh, Ramoli, that's a really good question. And there was one IIPR. Check this one out. So IIPR is a REIPE, get this, <clears throat> that focuses on growth houses and cannabis uh, related real estate. Focus on the acquisition, ownership, management of specialized properties leased to experienced state licensed operators for their regulated medical use cannabis facilities. A cannabis reite, guys. Uh, put that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna highlight this one. Uh, I do like what I'm seeing here on this ticker. Really nice growth, and a three percent dividend. So keep up with inflation. Also really good overall accumulation this is probably one of the best we've been seeing so far let's go on a weekly and see how far we can go back on this ticker looks like it does have some volatility here so you're gonna i mean even tesla pulls back 60 percent sometimes so it's you know we're looking to maybe buy a few of these tickers 
get maybe like a decent allocation in my overall investment portfolio on some of these um, that I can hold long term. So IP, IIPR looks uh, like a good candidate for that. IIPR would be even good for a Roth IRA, some sort of tax uh, savings investment structure as it is a REIT and you typically pay income tax on REIT so you have to watch out on that. You know, Lance, I actually wasn't going to publish the watch list because you guys are seeing it here in real time with me. So there's not really anything to publish, um, but I could, I'll definitely timestamp everything in the video description below, um, but I could also make a post on it in the Discord. Look at this. On November 19th, Jim Cramer, I like innovative industrial properties. Riots don't have a lot of growth right now, but I think this that one's okay. <laughs> Secretly accumulating? Who knows? So IIPR is uh, something I would look at. This is another one we'll do a little bit of uh, analysis here. So we have that high right now at 6.4 with 160 being a little bit more of the base. Let's go to the daily chart. This ticker is kind of notorious for having these very ferocious pullbacks. 117 is really nice support. I kind of feel like if I bought it right now, I'd be buying near the highs. This could be a failed breakout here. So to me, if we have a nice breakout here and maybe a bit of continuation, I would think about buying a pullback if we had a continuation. Otherwise, I would maybe consider waiting on this one a little bit longer. Waiting for that failed breakout and then maybe waiting for a break a little bit lower, buying near the lows. But I'm not sure if we're going to get something like that. I do miss a lot of moves to the upside because I'm typically too conservative on these. So... We'll see. Mm, yeah, super true, Ramoli. We could easily dive into this for a long time. Okay, Jake, so I got AIPR. I highlighted this one. It's one I, I do really like. Uh, OSTK being called out. Right now in this video, we're just kind of building a watch list um, that we can all kind of dive into a little bit later for a little bit more due diligence. Uh, OSTK, overstock. How come this is being called out here? This they they don't have any focus on cannabis, do they? Oh yeah, Mike, we've, we've all been there before. <laughs> or you cut your losses and then something rips. I didn't even check the tickers I traded today. Um, I will check it when I document my trades. Otherwise, it just gives me um, mixed feelings. I, I, don't, I don't even bother with that. OSTK is not a marijuana play, JK. C to sale self data found in 2010 Denver Colorado I like that date I like that location health information services so they're kind of going down the medical um, IT information route
I'll add this one. It sounds interesting so far. Let's look at it a little bit more in the chart. Uh, it's a 75. This is a bit of a smaller company. $76 million market cap. A little bit less today. 12 million float. I mean, this is a, a classic small cap that we'd probably end up day trading here. So if we really like this one, this could be a very, very interesting ticker. I like the volume coming in here. Clearly a lot of dilution on KERN. So you got to watch out with that. Selling off a bit today, but that's irrelevant. F possible floor at 350. And then again, yeah. low at 217. Worth watching. Guaranteed KERN, probably not the best long term hold from what we're looking at, but a lot of back holders on this ticker, I'm sure. I think how I would play KERN is uh, I probably just would day trade this one. I don't think I would invest in it. If I was going to invest in this ticker, I would probably look for healthy floor accumulation. I don't know if we're going to break this area. The volume is very light, which is actually quite a good sign. It wouldn't take a lot to move this ticker. So if it drops to like 2.5 or something like that, or even if it just stays in this area, and then some ridiculous news comes out, like partnership with this other company, even if it's not that great, could easily spike this company 50, 100%. So that might honestly be the way I would trade KERN. I feel like I've traded this company a few times in the past. Not entirely sure. Damn, Jesse B. There we go. Kern. I'll highlight it because it's kind of interesting and some, some weird part of me wants to keep watching it a little bit. Don't forget, guys, if you are totally new here, um, we go live every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to review the watch list and then trade the market open. Uh, this is a channel where we usually focus on trading small cap gappers. Cannabis has been a pretty hot sector lately, and um, it's usually something that's discussed quite a bit as we wrap up the live streams from like 10.30 to 11. Uh, so I did want to make a video where I kind of update my cannabis watch list, see what you guys are looking at, kind of review all of them with you guys a little bit just to fluff up our watch list a little bit. And then I want to make a video in the future where we're going to dive into these tickers a little bit more down the road. Um, this is just to build a watch list. That's all we're focusing on this video. We're going to be wrapping up fairly shortly here, but if you want to kind of get followed up on a lot of these tickers and you want to learn more about day trading, swing trading, Consider dropping, uh, 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 hitting the subscribe button, uh, tuning in, and um, seeing how we're going to follow up with this watch list. Happy to hear Ramoli, man. Um, so we did review APHA uh, lightly. We're going to be wrapping up this uh, short stream here in a little bit. Um, so I'll, I'll be time stamping all of the tickers below as we review them. I didn't dive into any one ticker too much, just kind of scratching the surface here, just to kind of get an idea of how we want to be watching it. But with APHA, a big thing I was talking about, um, was maybe waiting in this area a little bit longer for a healthy pullback because we just had a really strong rally here. And right now it's looking a little bit top heavy. So, um, a classic ticker, I would just be a little bit you know, careful on, but I think short term, you know, it's cannabis is, uh, one of the their top cannabis, uh, stocks. And, uh, I do think that this is one of the nicer investments that we're kind of seeing across the board. Also lacking a lot of dilution that a lot of these other companies are, are, uh, seeing. So I, I a lot more trustworthy on this one. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, Sean, it's an awesome community we got here. And uh, congrats on the trading today, man. You've been slaying it. Just checking here if I'm missing some tickers that you guys called out. LHSIF. Don't think I looked at that one. That sounds a bit like an OTC. Gainesville, Florida. There's a lot of these tickers that are pretty close by, I feel like. Okay. 
Join us for a holiday toy drive. Donate. Can I offer? Browse products. So they're a dispensary with products. Let's go ahead and add them to the list. Nice. We're getting a nice fluffy list here, guys. Good work. This is the first time we're doing one of these list live streams. But... Uh, so yeah, uh, LHSIF is, is an OTC. And remember, as we talked about before, ending with an F. So most likely this is, again, a foreign company. Probably maybe Canadian. Yeah, it looks like another Canadian company. All right. I'm typically not trading or investing in sub dollars. Um, again, they do have potential for some big upside, but... There's usually a reason there's sub dollar and OTC, so not usually my favorite way to play this. Right now they're really consolidating here, so it wouldn't take a lot to pop this ticker. 135 million market cap, huge float. Absolutely, the float is ridiculous. So I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of this ticker, but it looks like they did find a bit of a floor here, so it wouldn't maybe take a lot to move it down. I'm not sure how many people are just kind of holding this one and either just going to go down with the ship or, you know, sell into maybe a future spike or it's going to spike in one day and no one's going to sell it. Uh, and then just whoever pumped it, it's going to just, you know, reap the benefits. But I'm a little bit skeptical on a company like this. There's a lot of manipulation with these smaller caps. But I'll keep it on the list. Uh... You know what? We'll look at that one very briefly. Uh, VLDR, a LIDAR self-driving technology company. Uh, we just entered this one as a swing trade. Uh, da, 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 right here, we have our first entry now at 1975, and I probably will be accumulating this one uh, if it keeps selling off. Um, it's not a cannabis ticker, so we won't be focusing on this video, but at the end of every active day trading session, usually starting from 10.30 to 11, we'll be reviewing swing trades a little bit more in depth, and VLDR is one of those classic examples. Usually you'll see on the charts where I have my entries and exits, uh, which should happen, but TD lately hasn't been working that well, and you can see show trades is, is checked, but uh, just not popping up here. Yeah, Jared, let's do that. I'm a Florida man myself. That's funny. PL, we're in Vero Beach, Florida right now. We were in uh, Key Largo two weeks ago. And we're going to be flying to... Europe this weekend. Um, oh... There we go. I think I just removed one of these. I think it was can that I just removed, right? I believe so. Well, I'm gonna look at the playback and I'll fix it if not. PLNHF Planet 13 Holdings. Heiko was just talking about this one, wasn't he? This is actually a ticker that I'm already gonna highlight and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's an OTC, but it's the it's one of the few OTCs you see going in the right direction. Uh, almost a billion dollar market cap, kind of impressive there. Foreign play, it looks like. Good price action, love the price action. Clear breakout. Last rally was about 160%. This one's about 130, 150. <sighs> I think accumulating this one at 550 blindly without looking at anything about the company would be something if I was day trading, I would probably think about doing. So let's, let's P L N H F. Why is that ticker just so crazy? Huh? Let me go highlight it. I don't think it's going to be on Finviz because it's an OTC. Usually, usually Finviz doesn't have OTCs. Thousand shares at ninety nine cents. That's 
that's what's up, man. Nice, Jared. Planet 13, let's actually open this one. A cosmic shift in the cannabis experience. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, it means a lot when the website has a little bit of quality. And, and Planet 13 kind of gives you that quality right out of the gates, which is nice to see. Well, besides this horrible form, my brother and I, we always make fun of websites that even have forms. I mean, forms are ridiculous. And this one is pretty much as gnarly as it gets. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. Let's go to about first. They claim they own the world's largest cam cannabis store. Steps from the Vegas Strip. The goal is to operate ultra high end dispensaries in tier one markets nationwide. Sell these brands. <laughs> Tristan Gideon all in on GLSI. I do, I know guys, that one's going crazy, but right now I'm trying to focus on these cannabis tickers. I knew you guys were gonna try to distract me on our lead gappers today. It looks good. Um, like I said before, I don't know if you guys are just, some of you guys are just tuning in or not. Um, right now we're doing a very, very overview on some of these tickers, just building our watch list here to do more due diligence in a future video on. Um, so just kind of reviewing a few things with you guys here so we can all kind of throw in our favorite cannabis tickers into a watch list. Right now we have our favorite ones highlighted, APHA, ACB, GRWG, PLNHF, Kern, questionable ticker there. Uh, Planet 13, I do really like this one so far, so definitely gonna highlight this one. Um, sometimes, Jeff, just like the very simple information, just like an email, um, makes people pretty happy. Uh, just something clean. The problem with forms uh, is the fact that you just don't know where they're gonna go. Uh, you don't know if they work. Oftentimes forms on websites work, don't work, so you're just like, ugh, do I even wanna fill this out? Just give me an email or something like that. Um, this one does look very untrustworthy somehow. This looks like you're kind of subscribing to something. I, I don't mind signing up to like a get a 20% off form or something like that. I do that every now and then when I'm doing a little bit of online shopping, but it's these contact forms that just kind of make you a little bit iffy. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a clean website. Just keep it clean. Uh, try to be as straightforward as possible. And um, it shouldn't take too long to kind of understand what's going on on a website. Let's see what latest press releases here on Planet 13. I'm doing a lot of community stuff here, which isn't bad. It looks like they had a little bit of a Motley Fool article. Nice. All right. All right, not too shabby. Is CA and a canvas sticker? Oh, I just realized the time. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up here in a second. Let me just type in CAN. See if I can answer this uh, this question. Is can a cannabis ticker C A N
Chinese computer hardware company. Doesn't really look like it. Um, you might be thinking about C-A-N-N. Was C A N N O T C? It's always a little bit annoying that Finviz doesn't have OTC, so then you always have to do a little bit more digging. Yeah, C A N N, this is a cannabis company, so I, you might have been thinking about this one. Trusted partner to the cultivation, production, and retail side of the cannabis business. This is actually on our watch list as well. All right, guys, so we got a few tickers lined up here. Not, you know, crazy amount, but I think it's enough to get us started. I think there's some really good, interesting place here that it's, you know, definitely good afternoon or three um, of a research. Um, the top ones that we're probably going to be looking at, again, is TCNNF, IIPR, APHA, ACB, GRWG, Planet 13, which is PLNHF. That's a bit of a long ticker. Kern, I'm really skeptical on this one, but I thought this could be a bit of a kind of a... I don't know, a bit of a loose cannon kind of trade, so maybe worth looking into here a little bit more. Um, maybe some of these other ones are worth looking into a little bit more as well. Um, it really depends on you know your personal ref, uh, risk preference, your kind of knowledge about the ticker. Uh, so you guys, you have to do your own due diligence. We're going to be probably coming out with a few more videos on uh, cannabis tickers, uh, but for now, we got a nice little watch list here. So hopefully you guys were able to benefit from you know, finding what, what all you guys are trading. Tristan says, watch out for the Canadian plays. It seems like a lot of these are Canadian. Nice, Daniel, wrapping up with that. GLSI, man, this, this uh, as a small cap, this was just absolutely insane. Is, where is it? Right here, up 1,800% today. This was really the runner. Um, still just, you know, getting halted and whatnot. And oh, you got to almost zoom out on the order book to really kind of play this one. Uh, just a ridiculously, ridiculously intense ticker. All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up here. Or else I'm going to keep rambling forever. There's just I could look at stocks all day. So I just wanted to make this focused on the watch list. So let's go ahead and close this. Open the cannabis watch list. Here it is, guys. Uh, and I could actually remove OGRM. Uh, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 tickers on this watch list. It's some were already added, uh, but all the ones we added today and all the ones we reviewed today, I'm going to timestamp them in the video description below if you guys are tuning in here and you want to um, see that. So just give me another like hour or so and I'll update the timestamps. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, that's everything for this video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. I really do appreciate that. And remember, if you want to see live trading, don't forget to tune in every morning starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every morning, the market's open, so Monday to Friday. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about the day trading beforehand, uh, don't forget to check out our uh, video series. It's one to two hours long. It'll be a big heads up. We got a checklist here. Um, we got our two sponsors, Webull, four free stocks when you sign up to Webull, and our favorite savings account, um, Yoda Savings, and use the code Winkler for 100 free uh, lottery tickets. We got our Discord here um, if you guys want to add anything else uh, to the discussion today. I'll probably be throwing in the watch list on the Discord as well. So, all right, guys, that's everything for this video. <laughs> John, maybe, maybe we got to do a few more guests. So maybe... Uh, Maybe, Jeff, we'll have to get you in here next time we do a little bit of cannabis. Ramoli says, no more FOMO. Yeah, seriously. Oh, my God. This uh, Today was one of those kind of choppy days that easy to give you FOMO. I wonder what tomorrow's going to hold. I'm excited. Tomorrow's the Airbnb IPO, guys. So maybe we should trade the IPO together on Airbnb. That could be kind of fun. So maybe we'll think about doing that. Tomorrow IPO. What, what time is the IPO? Like 1, 2 p.m.? So we could all... Maybe get on again. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. 
Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. I'll see you then first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, ciao, cacao.